So a viral story right now on social media is Nigeria's new law about banning white models in advertising in the country. Now, the law is actually about banning all foreign models. So that includes, you know, Asian people, uh, other Africans, possibly, and especially white people. Now, this story is garnering a lot of discussion and attention online, and people are using the headline ban all white models to get more clicks. But I think it's good to delve deeper into this story because too many people read the headline and don't actually read the news. And this story conflicts me because it deals with a lot of what I talk about on my channel about transnational identity and also about what it means to be black in this world and the fight against white supremacy. So I think it's good to read this article to actually understand where Nigeria is coming from with this decision. And I'll give my opinion on it as we go. This article is from aljazeera.com. All you need to know about Nigeria's ban on foreign models. The ban seeks to foster local talent and grow the country's advertising industry. Photographer Alexandra Ashimole is seen during a photo shoot with fashion model Rita Jerry Riemann in Lagos, Nigeria. This was originally published on August 30th, 2022. Nigeria has moved to ban foreign models and voiceover artists from advertisements in the country. The measure announced last week makes Nigeria home to 200 million people, the first country known to enact such a law, which seeks to foster more local involvement in the industry and elsewhere. You see this often with countries many times countries try to protect their industries and this is called protectionism in th in this case nigeria is trying to protect its advertising photography entertainment industry by fostering local talent right uh too many times in many countries that i go to and currently i'm filming this video in africa right now i'm in mauritius and when you look outside on advertisements and on posters and walls you do see a lot of uh, faces of people that do not look like the average Mauritian person. When I walk outside here, I'll see billboards for homes and apartments and then shopping and cars and that sort of thing. And it's all white people, usually. Just Let's just be frank. It's all white people. But Mauritius is a very diverse nation, but it is a mostly Indian and then an black African nation with a small white minority, right? I don't understand why in Mauritius they constantly advertise like this, but I do understand why, because of white supremacy, the fact that white is seen as right, white is seen as powerful and rich and that sort of thing. And so advertisement puts out that message to not only attract European buyers, because there are many European investors that come to Mauritius, but also at the same time to associate their products with whiteness because it is seen as what's the ideal. Uh, it, was, it would be seen less valuable if you put that home up and put a black family up there, or it would seem less valuable if you put that luxury car on that billboard and put an Indian family there. But white is considered what's the ideal or the very or at the very least the standard all right the ban is set to go into effect on october 1st with observers saying it is sure to represent a noticeable shift in a country where non-nigerians have long been common on the air and radio waves so as you know i'm i'm in africa right now i'm backpacking across africa i'll be in tanzania in a few months but i want to say that uh you know, with Nigeria doing this, they're trying to foster their local talent. But I think it is common across Africa to see non-natives uh, of that country represented in the advertisements. Uh, I wish I could go to Nigeria to see for myself how this would be enacted. But I think... Uh, I'm not, with Nigeria, I have to have a visa to actually enter the country. What is the plan all about? The Advertising Regulatory Council of Nigeria announced a plan in an August 23rd statement saying the move was in line with the government's policy of developing local talent. It said it was also motivated by the need to take necessary steps and actions aimed at growing the Nigerian advertising industry. A 2017 to 2021 analysis by PricewaterCooper projected that Nigeria Africa's largest economy will be the world's fastest growing revenue generator in the entertainment and media industry in the next five years. As of in the past uh, decade, Nigeria is going through a renaissance, a cultural renaissance with exporting its culture to the world, with Afrobeat becoming very popular and many of their artists becoming popular, not only in Nigeria, but also in the British diaspora particularly. So I feel like Nigeria in the next decade or two will have a century, will have a time like Korea is having with their culture cultural media with their music and movies becoming exports all over the world. I think Nigeria is going to play 
a much bigger stage in the world as terms of in terms of cultural soft power. And I think it's also important to keep that in mind when we talk about this uh, with Nigeria in, in enacting this law to push out or promote their local talent there will be many more black faces that nigeria will have in advertising and media of course nigeria is like 99.9 percent homogeneously black but of course if they're going to keep it all black right and then nigeria becomes this cultural force that exports its media across the world that's going to be positive black faces that will put that will be put on the cell phones computers tvs all across the world which is good for our image because while some people might look at this story and say, you know, what if a white country banned all the black people or all foreigners on its TV? It's a completely different circumstance when and I want to explain why, because I've explained this on my channel so many times, so many times, but I'll make this very, very clear. There is almost no place in the world where whiteness is considered negative. I have to repeat this for people who are white and maybe they don't realize their privilege. Where in the world can a white person go? And then that white person, said white person, will be followed around the stores, treated like a criminal, viewed as a refugee or, or viewed as somebody who's a rapist, terrorist or somebody who is uh, there to commit crime or do bad things. Where in the world is whiteness associated with poverty? Where in the world can a white person go? If you were to drop the whitest of white pe person in Tanzania or Kenya or Burundi, people would not look at that said white person and say, oh, God, there's more illegal immigrants in our country. Oh, God, there's more refugees. They would say, no. Oh, rich tourist. Meanwhile, if you drop the blackest of blackest Burundian in Germany, <laughs> in Lithuania, in Poland, in whatever country, European country, there will be some, not all, some Europeans who would say, ah, too many immigrants, ah, too many refugees, too many foreigners, that sort of thing. Also, when we look at how advertising is done around the world and the perception of whiteness around the world, Whiteness is worshipped in places like Southeast Asia, in Asia in general, in Latin America, in America, in some parts of Africa as well. Whiteness is seen as the ideal. Meanwhile, blackness, by and large, because of the propaganda that has been pushed by the white media for centuries, for centuries, myths and lies about black people saying that we are X, Y and Z, all sorts of things, but the child of God. Right. These sorts of things list live in the mind of people. If you don't believe me, go look at all the other videos and statistics about the perceptions of Africans in other countries. Go watch my videos about how Africans are treated or viewed in other countries, Tunisia, uh, Turkey, Serbia, etc. And I'll continue to make more. The push for this is to help fight against white supremacy. White supremacy is not an attack on white people. White supremacy is the system and view and, and mindset and sickness that says whiteness is better. Whiteness is right. Whiteness is the ideal. We are not trying to create black supremacy where we want people to see blackness is white right, or blackness is the ideal or anything. We are trying to stop the mindset that stops people from uh, that starts people bleaching their uh, skin, uh, saying that that they want interracial relationships specifically so their children are lighter uh, people saying that they want to uh, move to European countries or that you know Europeans are the smartest or the most beautiful or the most successful people or people of that like we need to this is the fight against that to stop that sort of mindset because this sort of mindset is killing people It's literally killing people people dying from bleaching their skin people dying trying to get into Europe people getting killed by white supremacists who believe all of that nonsense this is why we are fighting against white supremacy and Nigeria doing this is not anti-white and if a European country did this I think that would be problematic. Yes, there is a double standard. Double standards do exist and they do not always have to be negative, right? And I feel like I'm explaining this to a white audience because too many of my viewers and, and, uh, and commenters are presumably white, are presumably people who have never thought deeply about what racism and white supremacy does to the minds of people all around the world because they've probably never traveled outside of their country or been in homogenous places where they are the minority. But you would understand if you were to put yourself in that situation how you are viewed as a minority is absolutely different than how people of color people of color which a term i hate are viewed as a minority right all right i'll continue 
Uh, the ban will pertain to any advertisement targeted or exposed on the Nigerian advertising space, referring to an industry estimated to be valued at about $450 million in 2021. It added that while ongoing campaigns will be able to continue to run to the end of their current term, subsequent applications for revalidation for continued exposure of such material will not be granted. So they're just going to, oops, sorry. <laughs> so they're just going to ban uh, companies that are, not ban the practice of using foreign models and they're not going to renew that registration of using foreign models in the advertisement industry right ban on the use of foreign models and voiceover artists on the nigerian advertising medium slash media all right this is the uh order that came out okay this is from the uh, federal ministry of information and culture all right uh i won't read all of this but the link for this article will be in the chat all right uh so is the plan likely to be effective? Nigeria had already imposed a tariff of about $240 for every foreign model used in an advertising spot, which has begun to transform how marketing campaigns in the country look, according to the UK's The Times newspaper. 10 to 20 years ago, if you check the commercials, I would say they were almost 50-50 in terms of foreign faces and all the voiceovers were British accents. Steve Babako, the president of the Association of Advertising Agencies of Nigeria, told the newspaper that would include nigerian brands using foreigners and global companies distributing their advertisements in the former british colony which gained independence in 1960. i want to say also when i think about why this order came down usually countries enforce these sort of uh culture war uh hardline issues issues that don't really detriment like won't detrimentally affect the economy but only try to affect the culture when there is some sort of like economic or social problem in the country that seems unsustainable right like for example uh turkey is going through an economic crisis and instead of the president of turkey trying to actually do something about the economic crisis he changes the official name of turkey to turkey right or in the united states uh you know when uh COVID-19 was happening and Donald Trump was uh, going around telling people that uh, the, the, vac the, co the COVID is nothing to worry about, even though over one million Americans died and continue to die. He was having all these culture war issues with the media, talking about the media is lying and the media is being fake to him and trying to pass laws uh, that were just ridiculous, right? Um, so many times when governments pass these laws or try to create a stir in the public about culture war issues stuff uh, or try to make nationalistic policy that just gets people to riled up and say, yeah, Nigeria, number one, uh, USA, number one, country X, number one. It's really because there's a, a deeper problem. And I know Nigeria is not the most uh, uh, well-managed country in the world, to say the least. But I would like to know what is spurring this movement in the government. Is it just it can't just be because, you know, there are too many British accents and foreign models on TV. There has to be something deeper going on, which spurs this action, because this always takes heat away from the real issue that's going on in the country. All right. Uh, Bibico said the laws were in line with the new sense of pride among young Nigerians who wanted to see representation in the media. I think the law is just catching up with national sentiment as long as many as long as maybe eight years ago, you would notice some kind of renaissance in Nigeria, he told the Times. People will tell you there are about 200 million of us. Are you telling me you could not find indigenous models for this commercials, Baby Ko said? All right, so I want to say that as far as this idea of indigenous people to a nation or land, or whether countries are supposed to be protection states or protection uh uh, cradles for an indigenous group of people or a certain ethnic group of people or race of people. I absolutely disagree with that. And this is a foreign concept to many people out who were not born in America or were not born in the Americas. But what I appreciate the most about the Americas is the idea of transnational identity, multiculturalism within a society, multiracialism within a society, and the idea that a, a country is not just a collection of peoples, but a collection of people who share an idea or believe in the same principles, right? So Nigeria, like many countries around the world, because the majority of countries are like this, is probably an ethno state, right? An ethno state in the sense that it is a place for Nigerians and a true Nigerian is of 
probably a few ethnic groups, Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo, and maybe the other ones, right? And as also a black person, right? I don't believe a country should be that. I believe a country should be a collection of people who have the same idea or, or want to be patriotic to that country. So, for example, the same way a Nigerian who moves to the UK and lives there for the rest of their life after they came there when they went to study when they were 18 or 19, lives there the rest of their life, speaks perfect uh, English and wants to be considered a true uh, British citizen. We allow that in the current Western world, in the current Western world of um by the way, I hate the term Western, Western, but we allow that in the current Western world in the idea of multiculturalism and transnational identity. Should not the same thing be accepted or or be applied if the reverse? I know right now the averse does not happen much. There are not many Americans like me or <laughs> there are not many white people <laughs> in the world running to Africa to em to immigrate there. Right. Uh, and there are not even a lot of African-Americans running to Africa or running to different places in the world to immigrate. But say, for example, a white person were to move to Nigeria, they should be allotted the same right or privilege uh, to be able to say, I am a true Nigerian, too. Now, would that person not be allowed to become a model in Nigeria just because they're white and they moved there and they immigrated there? I don't I, I, I think. In, in a lot of cases, they would say yes, because that would be the minority. That would be like a very, very slim minority, literally a handful of people that would want to do that, right? Not to disrespect Nigeria, but I'm just saying. But what I'm saying is, let's say in mass one day, there were a bunch of white people living in Nigeria, or there were a bunch of different uh, racial groups of people living in Nigeria. Would this law still be applicable? Would this law still apply? Would we not say, oh, all the Indian Nigerians and all the white Nigerians and all the the Southeast Asian Nigerians and all the other Africans, all the other types of black Africans, would they not be allowed to be there because they're not of the uh, tribe or ethnic group that many Nigerians consider to be native, right? Would they not be allowed to be on in the pictures because they are not of the same uh, race, which race is a fake concept, but they're not black, right? Would they not be allowed to be in the advertisement? I think that would say well, a lot of people, maybe that would that would be the end of the law, right? If that were to happen. But what I'm saying is I'm conflicted about this because on one hand, I like that this law is combating white supremacy and uh, homogenization of the world through media, right? But on the other hand, I, I, I really dislike this law because it sort of enforces some of the worst aspects of nationalism and protectionism, which I hate. I hate the idea of us saying we need to be a separate group of people than those people over there in this imaginary border wall that was created by Europeans themselves who told us this is now Nigeria when Nigeria never existed until the British arrived. Right. And I want to say that uh, this this law is it's complicated. It's pulling on many parts of my heartstrings. And I just uh, hope that people get a right the right perspective on this. I mean, everybody's going to reach their own opinion about this, but my perspective is that I hope this law uh, is viewed as a, a check on white supremacy throughout the world, a check on so many people in the third world, in the developing world, getting images in their mind of uh, blue-eyed, blonde-haired people and thinking that they are less than because they do not fit those standards, or treating those people like they are God on earth when they come to their countries just because they have been fed these images over and over again that these people are the ideal or they are the standard, right? We need to make sure that we put out media images in the world that show all people, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, whatever, all sorts of people as uh, as beautiful, as worthy of love, respect, and dignity, as ha as being complex, paradoxical characters. Because not every black person is all good, and not all white person, not every white person is all bad. People are complex, and there's a mix of things within people. We have contradictory uh, sides in all of us, right? So that's just what I want to say about that. So. Uh, this is a tweet from AJ Plus. Nigeria banned foreign models in TV ads, believed to be the first country to do so to stop an overrepresentation of white models. 
Regulators told Economic Times half of models and voiceovers in recent decades were white or British and want to boost local employment and pride. So what has the reaction been? Sigun Arinze, a veteran actor and president of the Association of Voiceover Artists, AVOA, commended the move, saying it was an, an enabling regulation that favors the local industry, especially at a time when Nigeria is in dire need of sufficient platforms for its teeming youth population. But social media users in Nigeria have been split on the move. Nigerian voiceover actor Jamaldeen wrote on Twitter, the voice was a dangerous retaliatory step that would hurt us. Mohammed Jamal, Arkham bans use of foreign models and voiceover artists for adverts in Nigeria. This is a good development. <clears throat> Muhammad Jamal. Now, I don't know if this person is a Nigerian, but his Twitter handle is saying white Nigerian. So I think this throws a monkey wrench into everything, because on one hand, I can understand why people have this tribalism, nationalism that says we are the true Nigerians, people who are black, people who are Yoruba, people who are Hausa or people who are you know, whatever ethnic groups that are here, and then all others are foreigners, right? But we would not want that same sentiment if black people were to go to India or if we to go to Brazil or if we were to go to, you know, France or that sort of thing. So we can't have it both ways. I advocate for a globalist, transnational, uh, multicultural world, open world. This is what I fight for and advocate for on my channel because this is what I wholeheartedly believe. And I would not want anybody, Muhammad Jamal, to denigrate his Nigerian-ness. If he identifies as a Nigerian, if he feels patriotic as a Nigerian, and if he loves Nigeria, Muhammad Jamal should be seen as a Nigerian as well. And he should not be discriminated against just because of his ethnic background, right? Meanwhile, Lebanese Nigerian entrepreneur Mohamed Jamal called the measure a good development. Others have pushed back on the characterization that the band specifically singles out white actors, noting the language only refers to foreign talent. Now, that's why I read this article, because too many people are putting the clickbait title. They banned white models. No, they banned foreign models. They banned foreign models. So all foreign models. That means the person has to be a Nigerian citizen, right? The person has to be from Nigeria. So the, you can't have Ghanaians, Ivory Coastians, Cameroonians, right? That sort of thing. Now, um, once again, I'll just say that I find this uh, law confusing as far not in the not a, not in its implementation or what it's trying to say but confusing for me as to how i feel about it because it's a good thing that is combating white supremacy but it's a bad thing that it's enforcing protectionist ideas and nationalism so i would like to pass the question on to the comment section i don't usually do this but this is similar to like the other videos where i just don't have a, a clear clear direct answer uh what do you think what do you think commenters let me know leave a like subscribe to this video Thank you for watching. My name is Simon Hill, and this has been the truth about Nigeria's ban on white bottles.